Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now recently I decided to sell off some of my older PC components, stuff that even I couldn't recommend for gaming PC builds in 2020. One part that pulled the short straw was this Core 2 Quad processor. These chips have been a real staple of the channel over the years. We've tested countless games with them, overclocked them with nothing but electrical tape, pushed extreme versions to the limit, and those of you who've been here a while may remember that it was a Core 2 video that kick-started the growth of this channel. While well, most of you guys watching this video right now probably joined me on my budget adventures over the last year or two, it was a random Intel CPU that I found on eBay that started the snowball effect that brought us all together. And that is insane. So today, before I retire this Socket 775 based lineup from the channel, I thought we'd take one last look at its modern day performance. The only Core 2 quad I have left is the 2.5 GHz Q8300. It once offered a tiny bit more performance than the most commonly known Q6600, but these days that really doesn't matter which version you pick because they'll all struggle in 2020, even with an overclock. If you do happen to purchase one of these, then I'd recommend no graphics card more powerful than a 1050 Ti to pair with them. A more powerful GPU would go to waste, and even the 1050 Ti is being held back. When it comes to playing newer games, one of two things are likely to happen. The first is that when you try to actually start the game, it will crash due to the lack of modern compatibility, like Red Dead Redemption 2 here, which teases you a little bit by making it to the main menu, before freezing. The second is that the games you want to play will run, but the frame times will be pretty bad, and even hitting a decent average frame rate will be overshadowed by the fact that freezes and jutters plague the experience. Now that being said, there is sort of a third thing that's going to happen. Using one of these CPUs in 2020 brings on a certain curiosity and excitement. Surprise as well. While some games will do exactly as good as you'd expect them to, i.e. crash or freeze completely, others like Mafia Definitive Edition, for example, will still run okay in some instances. Now this is a brand new game and sure, while we are on the map screen here, which of course is going to serve you best with a couple of hundred frames per second, quieter areas in the actual game itself will still grant you at least 30 frames per second. Now don't get me wrong, it's not a decent experience by any means because there is a lot of stutter here and there, and the footage does make it look a lot worse than it actually was, but the Q8300 sure is a fighter. And 12 years after its release, it's still hanging in there in some situations. Now this experience made me wonder whether or not a higher resolution would actually help. The GTX 1050 Ti is barely being utilised, so could an attempt to shift the bottleneck from the graphics card help out Intel's ageing quad-core? Well to try that we'd need a beefier card. Now my feelings here were bittersweet, on one hand it was nice to see the RTX 3070 working with this setup, but on the other hand this represents a huge mismatch and one that solves an issue by pairing two components that in the real world would never be paired. It's necessary in order to run our tests at higher resolutions though, as the 1050 Ti is only really ideal for 1080p or lower and I haven't really got anything that sits in between the two that can handle 4K uh, with decent frame rates if it was paired with another CPU. Now, honestly, I knew that this probably wouldn't have helped out. The CPU is going to max out at 100% usage or near enough regardless, so we're not really achieving much here, though we did get crispier visuals and a slightly better frame rate. I'm using DSR from the NVIDIA control panel here to actually display a 4K resolution uh, on my 1080p display, albeit downscaled. Now the smoother frame rate isn't immediately obvious from the footage from Mafia, I'll admit, but I guess an improvement is still an improvement. Combining a Core 2 Quad and RTX card though just feels very wrong. Of course, the games that didn't work before still don't work, and these include titles such as Watch Dogs Legion, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, just to name a few, and even if they did run, I don't think we'd get a very playable experience. That's not to say that some games still don't run with at least 30 frames per second, even at 4K, even if you do have to put up with those horrible frame times. 
Overall, there we go. I felt as though this series of processors needed a final send-off. They've done a lot for the channel over the years, and if we ever put together a PC build tailored toward older games, or a minimum system requirements PC that requires a Core 2 Duo, or Core 2 Quad at the centre, then you may see one of these or one of those again, but as for now, I think it's time to let Socket 775 rest. What a great 12 or so years it's been. Now I firmly believe that there will be some future releases that will still work with these chips, especially indie games or ones that aren't very intensive, so I don't think they are completely obsolete. There is always someone with a use for older hardware, which is why I'm glad these still seem to be plentiful on the used market, and you can find them for a pretty low price. It does make me wonder how long the... Um, 1156 core series chips will last too, you know, the i7-860 for example, the i5-750, and I imagine that the i3-530 or 540 is probably on its last legs, but yeah, I'm sure we'll take another look back at that series in the near future too. All that's left to say then is thank you for joining me on this final send-off of the Core 2 Quad range. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see all of you in the next one.